So rain or shine, candidates are hoping to see long lines of voters today. NBC Charlotte's Ariel Placencia is live at South Park Christian Church. Ariel, you've been there all morning. The parking lot has been packed. What does it look like now? Well, Rachel, let me tell you, since we've been in this parking lot, we have seen the sun come out. We've also been poured on and now we've got these overcast skies. So we've been on this roller coaster of weather, but I'll tell you what, this has not stopped people from arriving here to the South Park Christian Church. As you can see, this parking lot just packed barely any empty spots here. And as we make our way to the front door here, it's been a steady stream of voters coming to cast their votes. And I did speak to the pastor of this church. He said that they just kind of rearrange where they're having voters walk in just because they want to make sure that they're under covering just in case the rain picks up a little bit later on. Now at this point, the polls have been open for about five and a half hours and lots of people coming out to make sure their voice is heard. From the first in line at 530 this morning, it's important that everybody votes to those who walk through the doors exactly at 630 AM. I needed to be here first and early. This morning's weather did not deter these Mecklenburg County voters. The rain's not, never going to stop me from going out and vote. We've survived hurricanes this season. Could have been raining, pouring. I came prepared. I was going to I was going to vote either way. But experts say this rain, wind and fog could convince some people to stay inside. The worst the rain or the nastiness of the weather is, the more it's going to depress turnout. Dr. Eric Heberlig is a political science professor at UNC Charlotte. The more barriers you put in front of people, less motivated voters are going to say, well, why bother? I don't want to go out in the rain. And for those choosing to stay inside, this morning's voters have a message. Don't be afraid of the weather. Just come out and vote. I purposely didn't vote early. I wanted to be amongst the people that voted on the day of the vote. And polls here in North Carolina close at 730. And as long as you are in line, you'll be OK to vote. We're live for NBC Charlotte. I'm Ariel Placencia. Rachel, I'll send it back to you. Looks like now's a good time to head there. Ariel, thank you. Also right now in the Charlotte Mecklenburg area, CMS seeing many of its schools double time as polling locations today. So some parents we talk to are worried about strangers on school grounds while class is in session. NBC Charlotte's Ruby Durham is live at Myers Park High School, one of the schools doubling as a voting location. So Ruby, is the district doing anything to keep kids safe today? Yeah, Rachel, that's right. You're looking at one out of 80 schools here in Mecklenburg County acting as a polling site. So to keep students safe while you see voters are inside voting, school leaders say they're going to be increasing security here on campus to keep students protected and limiting voter access while in the building. Get up and vote. Your vote counts. After months of speeches and debates, one vote could make all the difference. Voters across Mecklenburg County are saying it's time for a different voice. Ours. Especially in a state like North Carolina where things kind of go back and forth. But in the midst of excitement, there's concern. There are so many other things happening at polling places around the country that we should definitely do more to protect people. Especially when it comes to our students. Here at home, several CMS schools are doubling as polling locations while students are in class. This has some parents wondering if there's a better way. I really think, I mean, it'd be great if it was a national holiday. In the meantime, Superintendent Dr. Clayton Wilcox tells us a campus security agent will be in place for protection. He says voters are taking secure routes through the school to the voting area while being monitored during the entire process and students will also be rerouted to ensure no contact with voters. You now with things recently people are at least on alert so maybe that'll help out but then again you can't really predict these things. All right Rachel CMS is requesting students and parents to be a little patient today with the changes. I'm reporting live for NBC Charlotte Ruby Durham back to you in the studio. I'm sure that's putting a lot of parents at ease though Ruby. Thank you for your report. Well one of the races grabbing the national spotlight North Carolina's 9th congressional district. So there's no doubt you've seen those campaign ads. Republican Mark Harris up against Democrat Dan McCready. Harris a well known pastor in that tight race with McCready a Marine vet looking to turn a historically red seat blue. NBC Charlotte's Mark Boyle spoke with both candidates this morning. He's now live at a polling location in the South End area. So, Mark, you look like you're about to head out on a scooter, maybe taking a ride to the polls. What's going on out there? So, so we'll get to the story in just a second. There's always an excuse to get on one of these scooters. But, Rachel, the scooters are free today. Anybody can jump on a scooter or a ride sharing app and you can come to the polls and cast your ballot. But back to the Harris and McCready race. It is so tight. We talked to both candidates this morning and they have one more message for voters if you still haven't gotten out to vote yet. 
both men out very early this morning. They know they just have a few more hours to go before this election is over. Democrat Dan McCready is stumping for votes and thanking voters for getting out to the polls today. McCready was at Alexander Graham Middle School in Myers Park this morning. We need a new generation of leaders to get to Washington. We need to put country before party. Republican Mark Harris was out first thing before the sun came up today. He's hoping to make it across the finish line in first place. I found him at Elizabeth Lane Elementary in Matthews. We're feeling cautiously optimistic. I think uh, everybody's been encouraged by the early vote turnout. Both are new in the political arena and truly neck and neck for the 9th Congressional District. Both can agree on one thing, though. It'll come down to the very last vote. Every vote counts here, and they know it. It's a very tight race. We feel great. We knocked on more than 34,000 doors this past weekend. We had thousands of volunteers coming out, knocking on every door that we could. I think there's uh, there's real energy out there. We've tried to, everything we have, uh, left it all out on the field. We've uh, brought our message to the people of the 9th District, and today it's just about uh, folks turning out and uh, them going to vote and voting their convictions and their conscience. And candidates alike will tell you there is no reason not to vote. So these two scooters just showed up here, the one I was riding on, and then just down the sidewalk, you can see that green one just beyond those two people. People are coming here in all these unconventional ways, scooters and Lyft and Uber. So get out and vote. You have a few more hours to do it. Rachel, back to you. Well, the 9th Congressional District is a very important issue on the ballot. I vote Mark Boyle for best election day live shot. So there's my opinion. Mark, thank you so much. Yes, absolutely. We are going to do it all the way for you. Because we are your election headquarters. Mark, thank you. Of course, we're not forgetting about the Palmetto State as well. We are the Carolinas, the big race there for governor. Republican Henry McMaster hoping to keep his seat for another term, while Democratic candidate James Smith vying to be the first Democratic governor to be elected since 1999 in South Carolina. Early polls showing McMaster over Smith, however, both candidates have been campaigning very hard over the past few weeks, speaking on a number of key issues, including education. South Carolina is the worst place in the country to be a teacher. And if it's that bad to be a teacher, it can't be good to be a student. And what I've heard, Henry, you say that is you're going to do nothing. That nothing will you're change not when you're elected. We do have a teacher crisis. We, all, we have a number of crises. We've got our infrastructure crisis. We've got a lot of crises. But raising taxes is not the answer. This is the first time in the state's history that candidates for governor and lieutenant governor will be on the same ticket.